Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Chunga. Chunga is an extremely versatile mage who has been seen in the mid lane, solo lane, and even as a jungler. Chunga has a low but very consistent area damage, as well as an extremely strong main lockdown combo. She even has the ability to consistently heal her entire team with a large area heal. Sounds bloated, right? Well, as I mentioned earlier, her damage is, uh, shall we say modest, so you really need to crank up the damage in your build if you want to make an impact as a mid lane mage. Which is a bit of an issue given her lack of any movement abilities in her kit. So that leads me to builds and, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Trunga is easily one of the most flexible gods when it comes to builds in Smite. While a full tank build feels pretty bad on her, every other sort of build, whether it be a damage focused, healing focused, or bruiser build, all feel pretty good on her. Just try to bear things in mind like cooldown reduction and mana regen, as they are extremely important to Chunga. Here's a variety of items that work extremely well with Chunga. When you're first starting with Chunga in any role, I'd recommend just a meta mage build that focuses on CDR. Then from there, splashing in your personal preference items as you learn how you like to play her. In terms of relics, well, this really depends on the role you're taking her into. For the mid lane and jungle, you almost always want beads and Aegis, but blink with beads isn't a bad call either if you get ahead. In the soul lane, it's a good idea to start off with beads to ward off the inevitable early gank, then going into whatever is most appropriate in the role you end up taking. You may want a blink, a shell, a sprint, it just depends on what your team will be needing from you. Optimizing your builds and playstyle is key to elevating your gameplay in a game like Smite, but it is exceptionally important on a character as versatile as Chunga. Part of what makes Chunga so versatile is her passive. Chunga is able to buy items from anywhere on the map, but must rely on her pet rabbit to go and fetch the items for her before being able to interact with the shop again. So basically, Chunga buys an item, then is unable to touch the shop again. The rabbit then goes into the fountain, sits in the fountain for a second or two to grab the item, then returns to Chunga and the item is placed into Chunga's inventory upon its arrival. Once the item is in Chunga's inventory, she is able to immediately use the shop again if she so chooses. So, an extremely powerful passive, but naturally has the massive downside of having to wait for some time for whatever item you've purchased to arrive. And yes, that does mean the further away you are from base, the longer it will take you to get the item, and vice versa. Generally, your frequency of use is determined by how the current match is going. If it's a slow paced match, you can afford to wait and get a guaranteed power spike by waiting for enough gold for a full tier 3 item. If the match is going by a lot quicker and every little advantage is massive, then using it on every tier of every item is viable too. Just don't forget to use it for the little things too, like purchasing sentry wards and especially buying your level 12 relic. It's a simple passive that can come up huge for you if you time your purchases right, but time them wrong and you can make it feel like a pointless add-on. As a short aside, whether by dying or just by recalling to base, any item that the rabbit is currently trying to fetch for you will immediately be added to your inventory. So using your passive on an item and then backing is a nice little way to get yourself back out there more quickly. Speaking of quick, let's get to the second part of Trungal's passive. Anytime Trungal casts an ability, she gains a burst of movement speed for the duration of that ability's cast time. This functions very well as a tool for extending Trungal's range as well as making her a more slippery than she may appear. I'll get into more detail as I discuss each individual ability, so let's get to it. In Trungal's first ability, she casts a large sweeping AoE cone, sweeping from left to right, dealing damage to anything it collides with. This ability is a very simple one, but there's a few tricks to it, namely thanks to her passive. The range isn't great, but the cast time is long enough that you can artificially increase your range by blocking forward with your passive move speed as you cast it to poke. And naturally, since this cone is so wide, you can typically clip half the wave in addition to your lane opponent. Also, you can artificially widen the cone of this ability, this time by using your camera movement, sweeping your camera with the ability's movement so it can clear more ground while it's active. And naturally, this method is used when clearing waves to hit all six minions. That being said, however, you still have to position yourself unfavorably to hit the entire wave. So, early on when this ability is still hitting like a cotton swab, you want to just focus on hitting the melee minions and poking enemies with it. It'll do the trick. Naturally, since you gain movement speed whenever you cast this ability, you can simply spam this ability while you're being chased to get away quicker. While the mana cost of spamming this ability consistently for wave clear, poke, and as a getaway tool may seem daunting, it's something you'll have to do as Trungal to stay relevant. Spamming your one will cause you to run out of mana quickly, but you have to do it to have any sort of presence in the early game, hence her popularity in the solo lane thanks to the blue buff. Always try to keep some spare mana though, mostly for Trungal's second ability. Trungal becomes immune to all damage in CC for one second, and naturally she gains her passive movement speed for the entire duration. So this is potentially one of the most powerful abilities in the game. However, miss time it or use it to negate something meager because you are out of position and you are in serious trouble with no other forms of movement or immunity in your kit. 
So, to start learning how to best use this ability, you want to treat it as if it were an Aegis, not as it beads, as you can't use it if you're already CC'd. While you're obviously immune to CC in your two, you can't actually use it while you're CC'd. And trust me, absolutely everyone is just sitting there waiting for you to use this ability so they can safely jump on you. So while you have to use it to negate something big, you often have to use it in conjunction with your beads or other relics since you have such a big target on your back as a healer. Oh right, healing. And you're talking about his third ability, she spins around creating an AoE around her. This AoE heals allies and deals damage to enemies, as well as granting a significant 50% anti-heal debuff on any enemies hit. This ability has a similar cast time to her first ability, so you can expect to use the passive movement speed in the exact same sorts of ways. Just a little bit more risky this time since the range is shorter. And yeah, that's kind of it for this ability. Every aspect about it is very similar to her one, just did an AoE around her this time instead of a cone in front of her. Just keep in mind that until you're deep into the teamfighting phase, this heal is really not great. That's not to say don't use it, but it's definitely not a safety net like an Aphrodite or Hell Heal is, at least not until well into the match. What is a safety net, however, is Trungal's ultimate. Trungal fires a fast-moving wide projectile in front of her. This projectile damages and stuns all enemies hit, and upon colliding with an enemy god, the stun is increased by one second, stacking up to four times for a massive five-second stun. The duration of the stun, however, is only increased for the enemy most recently hit by the ability. So if you hit 5 enemy gods in a line, the first target will be stunned for 1 second, the second for 2 seconds, and so on. So this ability is absolutely massive for Strongaw's teamfight presence. She goes from an annoying poke and heal spammer to a powder keg in a teamfight if this ability lands on a key target or two. Just keep your passive movement speed while casting in mind, since it can give you a bit of extra range, and vice versa if you're backpedaling. Much like Chungaw's other abilities, this ability is still lower damage-wise than other mages. However, it still packs a big punch, and naturally sets you up perfectly for your first and third ability right afterwards for a high damaging combo. Speaking of combos, there aren't many when it comes to Trunga. Typically you play the poke game, and then when the opportunity arises, ult and 1-3 directly following it, or if you have it, blink ult 1-3. For ability leveling, you want to start with your 1 at level 1, your 3 at level 2, and your 2 at level 2. In the mid lane, it's not a bad idea to grab your second ability at level 2 if you're against a more aggressive CC heavy jungler. Then you want to max your 1, then your 3, and finally your 2, leveling up your ultimate whenever you can. Trunga is very much her own character. While not difficult mechanically, you're definitely going to feel useless when first starting out on her, since her early and even her mid game are so weak. Learn how to manage your mana and maximize damage in each respective role, however, and you'll get through and start feeling more useful in the early stages of the match. And if after some time you still feel useless, don't forget to mess around with your builds and try to find a good balance between power and defense to fit your personal strengths when piloting the character. That's all I have on Trunga for now, though. Let me know if I missed anything, and thanks for watching.